All right, hey, Algebra 2. So for our activating strategy today, we're going to be talking about a biker um, who's biking 10 miles, um, and this is the first part of this problem. Um, but Karen's aunt plans to bike 10 miles. Okay, so maximum total 10 miles. So how long will it take if she bikes at an average rate of 8 miles per hour? So let's think about that. Okay, 8 miles per hour. X is representing the um, per hour, right? Right? It means I can take 10 and set it equal to 8x. Okay, so if I'm going to solve this, I'm going to go in and I'm going to say 10 divided by 8, which is going to give me roughly 1.25 hours, right? And 15 minutes, right? Because a quarter of an hour is going to be 15 minutes. That's something I always had trouble visualizing. So um, just something to think about. Number two, how long will it take if she bikes at an average rate of R miles per hour? Okay, so again, how long will it take if she bikes at an average rate of R per miles per hour? So that's going to be 10 divided by R, which is going to be your miles per hour, right? So 10 divided by R. It's the same concept as what we did here. We just had a number for that R. Okay, Karen wants to jo uh, join his aunt, but he only has 45 minutes to exercise. What will her average rate need to be for him to finish on time? Okay, Karen wants to join his aunt, Karan, sorry, I don't know how to say it name, but he only has 45 minutes to exercise. What will their average rate need to be for him to finish on time? Okay, so I've got 10 miles, okay, and we're going at an average rate of x, right, oh, I'm sorry, r is my rate, and we've got 45 minutes, so that's 0.75 of an hour, right, so the rate is r, and we got 0.75, that's how long it's going to take, right, or how long they have to take. So in order to figure out what R is, we're going to do 10 divided by 0.75. Okay, so we're going to go into our calculator and we're going to go 10 divided by 0.75. And so they're going to have to be hustling, but the rate is 13.33 repeating miles per hour. Right? And then what will their average rate need to be if they have T hours to exercise? Okay, so if they have some R times T, and then we've got 10 miles, right? And it's asking for what their average rate needs to be. So that means that we're solving for R. So we're going to divide by T on both sides. And so this is going to be R equals 10 divided by T. Okay. So this is really just kind of manipulating your formula um, just a little bit. Um, you're going to see this often in physics, okay? All right, so let's kind of jump into what we're talking about today. So yesterday we talked about horizontal asymptotes. We talked about graphing. We talked about rational functions. Remember, rational functions are going to be that fraction um, with an x in the bottom. Um, so it says state the domain of the following functions. Then determine whether or not excluded values of x are vertical asymptotes totes of the graph of the function, and then give a reason for your answer. So let's talk about vertical asymptotes really quick. Vertical asymptotes are where it's running up and down. So like, let's say I had, this is my rational, oh, rough, 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 rough. this is my rational function, then I'm going to have a vertical asymptote here. Okay, remember vertical is up and down, and then horizontal is side to side. So when they're talking about excluded values, they're talking about horizontal asymptotes, vertical asymptotes, and then they're also talking about holes, which we're going to talk about that in just a second. Um, whenever I come in contact with these rational functions, what I would do always, always, always is factor, okay? I would first factor and then kind of go on my, along my way. So in this top, um, we're going to factor and we're going to get x minus 2 times x minus 1. Okay, um, and if you were like, how did she do that so quickly? Yes, you could do the big X and you would say A times C, which is 2, B, which is negative 3. What two numbers will make that happen? 
and that's how I got these numbers. Okay, so you see how there's an x minus 2 in the top, and then there's an x minus 2 in the bottom, right? Those are going to cancel. If they cancel out, those are considered holes. So we have a hole at x equals 2. Notice how I changed the sign on that one, right? Okay, so let's actually graph this thing, the original problem, and let's see where um, we have any holes or we have any anything like that. Okay, so let's graph the original problem. Remember, you always want to use the parentheses around the stuff that's in the top and then parentheses around the stuff that's in the bottom. Yeah. Okay, so let's graph this mess. It looks like a straight line, but let's actually look at the table really quick. Sorry, that table set is a little funky. We're going to start at 1. And two. Notice how there's an error at x equals 2. Well, that's where we have a hole, right? Okay, so we have an excluded value or an error at x equals 2. Well, let's see if they have anything else. Uh, we don't because we're left over. If we cancel these two things out, we're left over with this x minus 1, which is why we have this linear equation, right? So the only excluded value that we have is x equals 2. Okay? So that means that we can plug in all real numbers for the domain. So for the domain, we can plug in all real numbers, except x cannot equal 2. Because if we plug 2 in this denominator, we're going to get 0 on the bottom. And that's a big no-no in the math world. Okay? We unfortunately don't have any vertical asymptotes on this, um, but we do have um, just a hole. Okay, uh, those are different from vertical asymptotes and horizontal asymptotes. Okay, let's go ahead and look at number two. So again, we're going to factor again. And so that's going to give me x plus 2 and x plus 1. Notice how that sign changed. And then we got x minus 2 in the bottom. Okay, well nothing cancels out. So we don't have any holes here. Okay, so let's look at taking our denominator, setting it equal to 0 because we know that that's going to be, that's going to give us our undefined answer, right? So if we take what's in the denominator, we set it equal to 0 and we solve, x is going to be equal to 2. But if we plug 2 in, that would give us undefined, right? So let's take this and let's graph it. So in the top, these parentheses, x squared plus 3x plus 2 divided by x minus 2. Okay, so looking at this, ooh, this has got a weird graph. All right, let's look at the table because I'm not really sure what's going on right there. Bye. Um, and so we've got a hole. We've got something going on here at 2. Now, I'm not, I don't think it's a hole because we didn't cross anything out, right? So let's look at our graph again. You see how there's a straight line that kind of runs, and you can actually zoom out on this one. See how it cuts down, and then it cuts back up, and then it starts again? Then we have a vertical asymptote at x equals 2, and that's an excluded value. Okay. Alright, and so looking at this again, we don't have any other errors, we're good, and we can zoom back in if we need to, just make sure we hit everything. Yep, we're good. Okay, so we have a vertical asymptote at 2, so we can use a domain where it's all real numbers, where um, x cannot equal 2. Okay, notice how there's a hole and then there's a vertical asymptote. So there is a difference between these two. Okay, vertical asymptote means that it's going to kind of like avoid that area. It's like a magical force field. A hole is just like you basically took the graph and you like took a chunk out of that section. Okay. 
All right, so looking at the next one, sketch the graph of the rational function showing all key features of the graph. Label the key features on your graph. So there is an anchor chart on your eClass page, um, and I'll pull it up just in case like you have problems seeing it. But you want to take this and you want to plot it. I always, like forever, amen, plug it into my calculator, and then I do some factoring just to check and make sure it's not like a whole versus a vertical asymptote, etc. Right? So, parentheses, we got to use those parentheses, otherwise it's wrong. Yeah, I think the TI-84s are pretty good about this, but my 83 is janky. All right, we got a lot going on here. Okay, so we see that there's some stuff going on here that's a little weird. This curvature tells me that there's going to be some asymptotes, and there's definitely going to be two vertical ones, um, and maybe a horizontal one, right? So we're going to factor this right here up at the top. So that's going to give me x times 2x minus 1. In the bottom, we'll factor and we get x plus 4 and x minus 4. Okay, so we're going to take what's in the bottom and we're going to set them both equal to 0 and solve. And so that's going to give me x equals negative 4 and x equals positive 4. So there's going to be a vertical asymptote at x equals negative 4 and x equals positive 4, right? And then we see that um, on this graph, there's something else going on in here, okay? So there's actually going to be a horizontal asymptote at so we notice um there's a little chart that i like to use um and so i actually just pulled it so these are the horizontal asymptote rules okay so if i have m divided by n all right so i'm going to compare the degree of m which is the leading term in the top divided by n which is the leading term in the bottom and so if m is less than n for the degree, remember the exponent, then y equals 0 is a horizontal asymptote. Is If m is bigger than n, then no horizontal asymptote. If m is n equal to n, then divide the leading coefficients. So if we go back over here, our, co our exponents, I'm sorry, our exponents are 2 and 2. So that means that we're going to divide by the leading coefficients. So 2 divided by 1 is going to give us 2. So that means that I'm going to have a horizontal asymptote at y equals 2 horizontal asymptote at y equals 2. There are no holes, so we don't have to worry about that. Um, and I think that's all we have to do. Oh, for a domain, we want to say the domain is all real numbers, except x cannot equal 4 and negative 4 from the vertical asymptote. And then for range, you're going to say from 2 to positive infinity and then from negative infinity to 2 and you never want to include it you always want to have like a parentheses around it okay um i would highly suggest writing this down pausing the video and writing that down because it's going to be necessary on this next one you're going to factor and so that will give you x minus 3 x minus 2 over x plus 1 yeah and then you're going to take what's in the denominator, set it equal to 0, and solve. So vertical asymptote at x equals negative 1. Okay. And then our top is bigger than our bottom for our degrees. So our top is bigger than the bottom. So no horizontal asymptote. No horizontal asymptote. Okay, and there's no hole. Okay, so we're going to say our domain, and our domain is all real numbers except x cannot equal negative 1. And this symbol is all real numbers. You can write it out, but I personally don't. It's just two, two r's, essentially. Okay, and again, you can graph these and then show all the key features if you would like. I'm going to do it really quick with the 20 seconds that I got. So you can see that there is a horizontal or a vertical asymptote at x equals negative one that's why there's this like straight line chilling um and then that's about
about it. Like you can talk about the Y intercept and the X intercept and that kind of thing. That's fine too. But we're more focused on those different things.